Hello everyone, Edgar here. Today I would love to share an interesting technique of rendering real-time graphics in Cinema 4D without the use of any external render engines or plugins. So without losing any more time, let's jump straight into it. Now I have set up this scene, as you can see, uh, with sort of like cartoony house and uh, swiveling light. You can see that it has like a nice depth of field and just generally kind of looks really good. And mind you, this is all real time. Uh, if I switch off my main camera with the bokeh, you can see the scene in full without uh, any post effects. So you can really see that this is actually going on in the viewport. Let me turn off the grid so it doesn't look so distracting. There we go. We got the moon over there. We have a nice tree growing. This guy is going about. And yeah, I think this is really, really cool. We also have some nice reflections in puddles, all real time. Now, you might be asking yourself, how is this possible? Since the Cinema 4D version R19, Maxon has made massive improvements in viewport rendering. This is all possible due to the enhanced OpenGL uh, capabilities. But before we get to this place, let me explain you the basics. Now I have gone ahead and set up a very, very simple scene. Just a cube, uh, icosahedron, a sphere and a plane. I also went and created a very simple material, nothing but reflectance. Uh, the reflectance type was set uh, to Beckman and roughness to zero. This is literally all I did, uh, nothing else. Let me just quickly throw it on my geometry, onto everything. And you can see that everything just goes black. Mm, not very exciting. Uh, to start enabling the enhanced OpenGL features, follow me. Go to options. If your enhanced OpenGL here is not enabled, enable that. If we uh, go for uh, reflections, because our material is reflective and that's what we want, we want those reflections. We enable the reflections and I mean, it's kind of okay, but uh, we're getting this kind of default um, Cinema 4D reflection map, which is, as you can see, not in the sky, it's not an HDRI, it's just like a default standard reflection map that Maxon included. But we can see that this is pretty fake because we're getting the reflections on all of our geometry, but not on the plane. Plane does not reflect any of those pieces and the pieces don't reflect each other and we enabled reflections, so what else should we do? Well, if we click on configure, uh, we get this viewport perspective um, settings. What we are interested in here is this place, enhanced OpenGL. Let me just lock this thing so it doesn't go away. Uh, we have enabled enhanced OpenGL, awesome. Let's also enable shadows, let's enable post effects. Um, so far I'm not worried about transparency, but here's the thing. By default it's gonna be closed like this, but wherever you see this black little triangle, you can click on it. This is where you're gonna get more options. I'm gonna click on screen space, local reflections, and boom, look at that. Now we're getting some weird artifacts like this sort of um, banding here. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can address those. But I mean, this is really, really awesome. Look how fast it is. Like there's literally no waiting time. Um, so to address this little artifact banding here, you have this ray distance and geometry thickness. Let's start playing around with those. If we increase ray distance, we can see that these bands are increasing as well. If we decrease that, yeah, nice. We can see that the banding is decreasing as well. Uh, geometry thickness is kind of weird, but also it sort of like extends where your geometry would probably touch the floor. Um, I will start by distance 
and you can see that I'm already getting much nicer reflections. I'm getting those sort of like faded reflections, which is what I want. Cool. And the geometry distance, sorry, geometry thickness. Probably not gonna play with it too much because it kind of creates the weird artifacts on its own. But yeah, I think that this is okay more or less yeah so cool we are getting some nice reflections here sweet so this is reflections let's close this one down now this is ssao which is screen space ambient occlusion if we enable that we can see what happened uh, it kind of started adding a little bit of shadowing over here if we expand on that, we also get a little bit more options here. If we start expanding on radius, you can see, maybe I should crank up the power so you can see it better. So the radius, you can see, kind of blurs those things out. Depth range, it's gonna show you how far does it go. So I want it obviously to go as far as my plane is. Nice. And samples are kind of like just, you know, whether like the quality of this ambient occlusion now of course the power is very very strong right now so i'm going to reduce that cool already looking so much better and don't forget this is all in the viewport so this is cool right but let's see how we can take this and make it into this. I didn't model this, uh, as you probably can tell. The model was done by the amazing artist called Art by Kid. Uh, and I downloaded it on a Sketchfab. You can find loads of amazing models on Sketchfab, which are free to download and artists are giving you creative licenses to use them for your own projects however you want which is awesome so i went ahead and downloaded this model i'm going to leave a link in the video description just click on download and the model will be downloaded to your drive when your model has been downloaded let's go ahead and open it up now in cinema 4d when you want to import a model you don't go into open you go into merge uh, and this is the model that has been downloaded, minihouse uh, underscore FBX. I'm going to open it up. It's going to pop up with this dialog. I'm going to click OK. And yeah, we have the house, but it's all black. Uh, what's going on? Well, nothing serious. It's just a bunch of textures missing the correct link. You can see that there is like a question mark under the color channel. Uh, it is just confused because it doesn't really know where the texture is. So let's help it find it. I'm just going to click on this one and find the texture in the text folder. It says mini house 4. So this is what I'm going to feed it. Mini house 4. Yes. You can see our textures are coming back. Amazing. I'm going to do the same. So I went ahead and relinked all of the textures and this is what am I getting. Looks really good, really nice job done on the modeling. Now you can see when we're zooming in, we're getting like a low resolution sort of textures going on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of my textures, click on them, go into editor, reselect them, sorry. Um, and in editor, texture preview size, I'm going to put on no scaling. Boom, we're getting all of those textures in the high resolution straight up. Amazing. So this is already starting to look much better. Uh, but it's still quite far away from looking like the final thing. So first thing I did, I selected uh, a part of the model which is this, the bottom. I selected the material, open it up, and I decided that, you know what, uh, I want some of the house parts to be 
kind of like reflecting in the puddles. You know, people who use like Octane and everything else, they have the fancy uh, real time, almost like reflections in the puddles and they do this like after rain scenes. Well, I decided to do the same. So I enabled the reflectance. Uh, I want to delete this standard specular, add a Beckman material and everything just goes into the mirror. Now, I don't want everything to be reflective. I just want some sort of puddles. So in the texture layer color, I'm going to load an image. Boom, looking so much better already. You can see we're getting some of those standard HDRI reflections, but not yet the house. This is because we haven't enabled those options that I was talking about before. Uh, before we go and do that, uh, I'm also going to go into bump. Let me copy, uh, copy this channel, go into bump, enable bump and paste the channel here, just so we're getting a little bit sort of, of a bulging kind of thing, which would be visible in a water puddles. Uh, this might be a little bit too strong, but you can see that we can easily adjust that. Nice. Yeah. Looking much better. Cool. So I'm going to go into my options and configure. And in reflections, I'm going to go ahead and enable sp screen space local reflections. Nice. Look at that. This is looking pretty cool. We're getting the reflections of the house and the window and a bunch of other things as well as our um, default HDR. Again, let's go ahead and fix those issues that we had before in the demo scene. Just gonna go ahead and de decrease ray distance just so we have the nice fade in our reflections. I'm also gonna enable the SSAO and probably increase the radius a little bit and play with depth Add a little bit of power and again just a little bit more radius cool so as much as i like my mirror sort of mercury reflections in the puddles um, i think i want to see some of my tiles to be um, visible through that so let me address that. Gonna go into my material. Uh, gonna go into the Fresnel and add the Fresnel dielectric. Here, I'm gonna start changing the strength and you can see that some of the tiles are start being more visible. Play with strength and IOR, maybe layer mask, let's see. Yeah, okay, let's change this to blue because I don't want it to be looking like blood. <laughs> cool, maybe this is a little bit too blue, just a touch. Yeah, nice. Cool, so we're getting our real time puddles as well, which is really nice. Now, this is where we can start lighting this whole thing. There is a few things which you need to understand about lighting and using lights uh, in real-time enhanced OpenGL. Now I'm gonna start by adding a sky because I want it to be a night scene. I'm gonna add the sky, create a new material, turn off everything except for the color, make it maybe like dark dark blue almost black and put it on the sky. I want to work on this model a little bit more. What I did uh, is I went and separated certain parts of the model because I wanted to uh, adjust the materials. So I selected this model, uh, this part of the model, uh, selected this one, this window, this couple of polys, those couple of polys make it a uh, luminance material and make it sort of like a yellow warm window light. 
can ap apply it to my windows. Nice. We're getting those warm windows. Uh, I think I forgot to also replace this one. Um, where was it? I'm gonna be lazy and I'm just gonna put this over here, and override it, fine. Cool, next thing I want to do is I want to separate this little lamp because I want to add a slight movement to it. I'm gonna select a couple of polys, press UW and it's gonna select this whole object, which is pretty sweet. Gonna do the same, perfect split, use it all the time. Uh, adjust the axis, put it up here to the top and so now we can swing it back and forth. I'm gonna be lazy, not gonna be doing any keyframes, so I'm just gonna go Cinema 4D, Tax, Vibrate, Enable Rotation, change frequency to something smaller like 0 0.5 maybe, and let's see, cool, so it just kind of goes here and there, gonna make regular pulse, yep, still too much, maybe 0 0.2, too slow, 0 0.4, That's cool. I would maybe change this to 10. So it's just more side to side. What about this guy? Yeah, that looks like pretty organic movement to me. Looks nice. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna go into my split thing, select, uh, select those faces from each side. I'm gonna use the inner extrude. And apply my luminance material, just so we have the consistent sort of emissive color going on. Looking good. I'm gonna add my first light. So when you're rendering stuff in real time, and you want to have shadows. Uh, of course, you go ahead and enable your shadows here, as well as shadows over here. Cool, I mean, this is what we used to have already for a while, nothing too amazing. Now, when it comes to using light with shadows in Cinema 4D Enhanced OpenGL, you are only limited to two sources of lights with shadows. You can have much more sources of lights than two, but only two that can have shadows. Let me show you what happens. So I have this one light, that just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna color it, I don't know, red. It's gonna look like a horror film. So there we go, we have a red light. Gonna have another one, I'm gonna make it a blue light. Nice, looking like a cyberpunk sort of thing. So, you can see that we're still having shadows, one here and one there. Maybe if I move it this way, it'll be more visible. So you can see that this one has shadows here and this one has shadows there. Cool. Let's say I add a third light and it's gonna be green. Now I added light, it kind of has the ambient default, kind of not real shadows, but it kind of like dark and bright, but it doesn't have any shadows, even though the shadows are enabled. And what's more, the shadows on my uh, other lights are gone as well, except for the first one. So you are limited to two sources of lights with shadows. If we disable that, we're back. We still have our shadows.
So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those lights for now. Cool. So now when we are done preparing the model, we can go ahead and start lighting up the scene. Uh, first, I'm gonna create a simple Omni light, drag it out here. Uh, I wanted to add a couple of things to this Omni light before we go ahead and start using it. So the first thing I want to do instead of Omni light, make it an area light shadows soft even though they're going to be hard uh, and use the sphere and in fall off i want to use inverse square outer radius we can reduce to zero and the radius of decay this is what we need cool so because we kind of have uh, a yellowish light here. I'm going to try to match it and sort of make it a yellowish light here as well. I'm going to increase the brightness, move it about here maybe. Or maybe I'm just going to put it here, reset the PSR, and then move it around. Yeah, like this. Cool. So this is like our first light. Let's see. Nice. Cool. You can see we have our shadows moving. Looking good. Maybe gonna reduce reduce the decay a little bit or increase. Actually, maybe reduce the brightness a tiny bit because I think we're getting the this part is overexposed. I'm going to duplicate my light, move it up here, disable the shadows because remember we have to save our shadows. Uh, we only can have two light sources with shadows. So I'm going to use it wisely. So one here, one here because it would be emitting from all those both sides. nice might want to move another one here would reduce the brightness again just so we have a little bit of illumination going on here This one I think is way too bright. We're losing this lovely shadow over there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now I want to use the second light source uh, for my shadows. Um, something that would be probably like a moon or something. So let me duplicate my light source. I'm going to move it somewhere like I want some of the front of the house to be illuminated a little bit and drop drop the shadows gonna increase the brightness nice uh, maybe yeah maybe something like that is nice I'm going to change it to blue, something like that. That looks great. Look at that. Such a nice, cozy, cozy looking house. So we have our main sort of beacon. We have a moon. We have also those windows which I eliminated. So let's put some lights in those. Now, again, I'm not going to use any more shadowed lights because um, it is forbidden. <laughs> no, if we want to have our shadows, which we already enabled, let's not use any more um, shadowed lights, which is fine. We don't have to. I'm going to increase the brightness on this one, maybe reduce the, the area. 
duplicate it again, move it out here. There we go. Increase the brightness here a little bit. And perhaps scale it down a bit. Cool. Duplicate it again. Move it up here. It's looking really nice. Now I noticed that as we kind of edit the lights, our some of our reflections are not as visible. So I'm going to go back and adjust that. Cool. So I am pretty happy with my basic lighting. I'm going to add a couple more ambient lights here and there. Now, yeah, I mean, this is all okay. I kind of like what is going on here uh, with this warm lights. Uh, I feel like over here we're not getting um, in a lot, even though this is what it probably would look like. And also this side is completely dark. Um, perhaps let's add another light here. Um, let me select this. I think I forgot to put my texture here and I would also add our light over there just so we have something going on here. Nice. Let me just align it properly. Cool. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Um, yeah, I feel because our moon is kind of like shining from here. Uh, we're not really getting a lot of um, nice kind of uh, lights over here. So of course, we can kind of compensate for it with another light here. Uh, I think I would actually prefer to put another warm light here. Just kind of add a little bit more coziness to the whole thing. Gonna make it small, put it under the roof as if there is some sort of like a lamp or a light over here. Increase the brightness a bit. Sweet. That's looking good. Gonna move another one. Maybe put it up here. Cool. Yeah, I think that's looking really nice. In fact, I'm going to go and change this one to maybe slightly more blue as if it would be reflecting the light from like a puddle into the window. Maybe going to move this light over here. Let's say the moon was shining and it was reflecting off the puddle under the window. And reduce it a little bit so we get our shadows back. Cool. Now I think this is looking pretty, pretty neat. Um, of course, now if we play it and if you look into the reflections, the reflections are actually reflecting the light boundaries, and we don't want that. It's an easy fix. We just go into options, sorry, filter, and uh, tick off light. There we go. So this is starting to look pretty neat. We can uh, navigate around the scene and we're getting nice reflections. And generally, this is looking super duper cozy, which is awesome. Uh, what else we can do uh, and what I did in my final scene, I decided that this thing needs a tree for sure. It looks so cozy. Why not add a tree? So I went ahead and made a tree in the Forester and I'm going to just paste it over here. Boom. Nice tree. Um, 
So the tree is looking neat. Uh, I think I want to darken my background a little bit because it seems to be a little bit too bright for my taste. Something like this, almost black, but not really. And I also wanted to add a moon just to make it a nice moonlit night. Uh, for this, I'm gonna go and make a sphere. Put it up here, create a new material and luminance and in texture i'm gonna load my moon map which i downloaded from a nasa website it's a 4k image in editor i'm gonna make no scaling just so we have the final resolution I'm gonna put it on the moon looking sweet and in color i feel like i want to add a little bit of blue tint to the moon just a touch really oh no the moon has fallen in the garden cool now i know that my light source is over here in fact if i enable the light i know it's right here yeah, but just for composition settings, and I know it doesn't make any freaking sense at all. I'm gonna put them on behind the behind the tree, just because I want to frame it like this. I know it doesn't make any sense. Hey, this is cartoon, cartoony sort of scene, and I want to do whatever I want to do. Uh, the moon is gonna be huge, by the way. Gonna move it there. Gonna adjust the color of my luminance a little bit more. And let's see. Yeah, I want this sort of blue moon. Nice. Yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna adjust the size of my moon until I am happy. It's huge. It's a really, really big moon. There we go. Something like that. Cool. And I'm gonna hide my lights. Look at that. Our scene is looking really, really nice. So it's almost like we're sort of doing like a game engine kind of lighting and rendering here in real time in Cinema 4D, which is really awesome. Now, unfortunately, our viewport rendering has those light limitations, but I think we can get away with quite a lot, which is sweet. The next thing I wanted to do was to set up the depth of field. So I'm gonna go create my camera, go inside of my camera, I want to change the focal length to something like maybe 15. So we have like a wider angle of view. So it's a little bit more dramatic. Move my moon somewhere further or make it huge so I can see it better. Nice. And what, what, what did I want? Oh yeah, I want a depth of field. So I'm gonna go back into my configure panel, enable depth of field, and just gonna stop the animation. And over here, I'm gonna enable um, the f-stop, sorry, decrease the f-stop a little bit. Start decreasing the f-stop and see what's going on. Ooh, everything went blurry. That's all right though. I would say because my scene is probably quite small, so the f-stop is going to be something completely ridiculous like 0 0.3. 
maybe even less 0 0.2 yeah something like that you can see we are getting uh, the nice sort of blur um, now we need to set up the focus distance what would be the focus distance you can take the arrow and click on something so it's around 600 so I would maybe say 500 or yeah why not 600 so as we are moving and cruising around you can see that things are getting in and out of the focus which is absolutely awesome look at this I mean we are doing and moving this in real time this is awesome man I mean I feel like a game developer <laughs> even though I have not used Unreal Engine or Unity for a very long time and my experiments were pretty pretty funny anyway um, so yeah I think this is looking great look we can move around our scene and we're getting the depth of field and the shadows are moving and things are looking really really nice now if you would want to go ahead and render this thing out as it is uh, go into render settings change it to hardware OpenGL go into OpenGL uh, settings enable enhanced OpenGL shadows post effects noises tessellation SSO just enable everything depending on your scene even though I don't have tessellation but whatever reflections and depth of field anti-aliasing I would put maybe around two brute force super sampling let's put two and yeah I mean we are ready to render baby everything is gonna be exactly as it looks we don't have to wait and see how things are gonna turn up so let me just quickly animate the camera just so we can see how the things turn up let's say I'm gonna reduce the focus distance so I'm gonna keyframe that as well as my position scale rotation I'm gonna go to my frame 200 and I'm gonna move somewhere like here oops got stuck in a plant and I'm gonna change my focus and the coordinates there we go look at that this is exactly what we're gonna get isn't that awesome um, as well as this is going down I'm gonna collect everything into a null object except for my camera so to make camera move a little bit more interesting so as this is going down I'm gonna do the slight rotation of the scene with the lights inside so we're gonna do this and that which way maybe here right of course we could have done it with a camera but I'm lazy so I'm doing it like this cool let's render uh, I'm gonna make it just save as a video because I don't want to put it in After Effects um, and gonna put all frames save just gonna put it on my desktop gonna call it a real time house cool let's render this is rendering incredibly fast you can see it just shows zero 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 it's like less than one second you can see how fast this thing is going even with the depth of field 
and the shadows and everything else I think this is going incredibly fast now I do have Octane I love Octane and I'm using it all the time for the project but considering that not everyone has the access to the expensive graphics cards and <laughs> licenses and everything like that you know and not everyone is doing this kind of work you can do so much in this OpenGL look at that I mean it kind of has this uh, game engine sort of quality to it but like the render was done in less than one minute for this whole thing and I mean this is pretty cool one more thing I wanted to give a shout out to Clement Morin I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly Clement Morin or Morin I'm sorry if I'm not saying it right he shared this amazing Instagram post um, where he said that he was playing with like real-time um, rendering in Cinema 4D and he kind of did this very very short kind of breakdown and I was like wow this is amazing let me try to recreate this so my humble attempt was to do sort of what he did and I think in even though he went ahead and created much more advanced scene with flowing water and a bunch of other moving trees I think um, I have succeeded in my own way but yeah the, the his main inspiration came from this guy Clement Morin thank you so much Clement for inspiring me uh, to go ahead and try this thing for my own and thank you for watching this lengthy tutorial to the very end if you like it give it a thumbs up subscribe and leave a comment for what you would like me to do in the next one thank you so much and see you soon